In this session, we are going to perform pharmaceutical form for rectal administration, in this case, suppositories. As you can see in the slide, we can classify suppositories according to different criteria. The first practice that we will carry out will be the elaboration of glycerin evacuating suppositories. According to the previous classification, these suppositories are water-soluble, although they will not exert systemic action, but local action. Glycerin is hygroscopic, so it can attract water and increase volus volume. In turn, sodium esterate has two main functions. On the one hand, it is responsible for the esterification reaction that appears on the slide, giving the pharmaceutical form solid consistency. It also causes some irritation in the rectal mucosa, thus favors intestinal motility in the last portion of the colon. For the elaboration of our glycerin suppositories, we will use the formula of the slide. First, the bath should be heated to 95 degrees and then introduce the glycerin. When it is at the required temperature, sodium esterate is added little by little while stirring gently to avoid adding air. The mold must be lubricated with a few drops of liquid paraffin, since the glycerin does not have much detection power and could stick to the mold. When sodium esterate has completely reacted, the final appearance of the liquid should be transparent and a little viscous. We proceed to overfill the mold and after that cooling. If the liquid presents yellowish coloration, it is indicative of the presence of acrolein, a toxic product derived from the excessive heating of glycerin. In this case, we have to discard the obtained product. When the mold reaches room temperature, we will extract the suppositories. Now we have our batch of suppositories ready for use. In practices two and three, we will study how to elaborate suspension types suppositories and the previous calculations once the excipient and the suitable active, active principle are selected. Usually, suppositories are prepared by pouring the melted mass into molds containing alveoli of suitable shape and size. The preparation of the mass involves the weighting of these constituents, that is, active ingredient and excipients, whose mixture will be dosed in volume, this being the capacity of each cell, so that each suppository must contain an exact dose of the drug. In the formula, the amount of excipient necessary for one suppository is usually not, not specified and therefore it has to be calculated previously. For this purpose, we need to know the amount of excipients that is displayed or in other words that is replaced by the dose of active, active principle. This data also depends on the density, so this value is called density factor. And as we have said previously, uh, when it is not known, it has to be calculated previously. If drug and excipient have the same density, the grams of displaced excipients will be the same as those of the added, of the added drug, since those grams would occupy exactly the same volume. In the practice, this is, it is known that uh, densities are very different. So, the density factor is defined as grams of excipients displaced by one gram of active ingredient. In this practice, we will learn how to calculate the density factor of mass sterium, sterium and Cooper sulfate. To do this, we will carefully follow the steps summarized in the presentation. First, we calculate the average weight of a pure excipient suppository. To do that, we weighed around 16 grams of mass sterinum and melted it in the bath previously heated to 60 degrees. The molds are then lubricated with liquid paraffin and the molten excipient is poured over the alveoli, always overfilling. Once the mass is solidified, the excess is removed with a spatula. The suppositories obtained are extracted and weighed. 
this data is the average weight of excipient suppositories, which we have called B. In the second step, we are going to elaborate ex experimental suppositories with a known quantity of active ingredient, which corresponds to the data called X. We start pulverizing 2 grams of cup copper sulfate, which is our active ingredient, ingredient, and we incorporate into 8 grams of molten excipient by soft stirring. The suspension is then poured into the mold, previously cooled, to, achi to achieve a rapid solidification. In this case, the alveoli are not completely filled, so more molten excipient will be add, will be add until they are filled in excess. After that, we let them cool and remove, ex and remove the excess with a spatula. Afterwards, we extract our suppositories from the mold and calculate the average weight, which will be the value name A. Next, we perform the calculations from the slide. The result shows the density factor corresponding to the suppository made with the active ingredient copper sulfate and using mass styrenum as excipient. Once the density factor has been calculated, we can proceed to the elaboration of our definitive suppositories, in which the active ingredient must be, must be homogeneously distributed in the volume of each cell, and therefore they should present an uniform coloration. First, it's necessary to perform the calculation in order to find out how many excipients and active ingredient we need to make our batch of suppositories. The aim of this practice is to prepare a batch of five suppositories, so in order to have enough mass for overfilling properly, Calculations will be performed to prepare six suppositories, as shown on the slide. The following video shows the elaboration of the suspension type suppositories. The first step in the preparation of suppositories is the weighting of the components. We can also lubricate and prepare the mold for later use. Next, the active ingredient is pulverized into the mortar. This is a very important step since in this way particle size is reduced and the sedimentation rate when introducing in the, in the alveoli will be also reduced. Next, the excipient is melted in the bath. Then we add the active ingredient stirring while the temperature is decreasing. The exact moment to pour the mass on the mold has to be chosen carefully, because if the mass is poured too hot, the active ingredient will sediment during the cooling. However, if it is poured too cold, it will solidify during pouring. When they have cooled completely, the excess mass is removed with a spatula, and then suppositories will be carefully extracted. Then we perform visual inspection for, of the batch and write our results.